everyone, so we're going to be continuing from us today the learning intention of I am learning about money. Today though we're not going to be um, finding totals or budgeting anything like that, we are going to be looking at something called exchange or foreign exchange. So hopefully from Monday when we're researching different coins from around the world, we discovered that lots of different countries have different currencies. So our first um, success criteria today, I understand that different currencies have different values. So that one pound and one dollar, for example, are not exactly the same thing. And we'll have a look at that in this lesson. The second success criteria is going to be that I understand that one pound will buy me different amounts in different currencies. The last success criteria is that we are going to be using what's called an exchange rate to calculate how much money I can buy in the different currencies. Okay, This is quite complicated. Um, it's useful in real life if we are going on holiday and we need to buy currency so that when we are in a foreign country we can't use pounds. Um, we need to use the different currencies that that country uses. So we would go to the post office or a travel agent or um, places that sell different currencies and use pounds to buy different currencies. Okay, An exchange rate is something that works out what your pounds can buy you in that currency. Okay, The first one we're going to look at is Euro. As you found out on Monday, lots of different countries use the Euro. Um, you've probably maybe even been on holiday yourself and used the Euro on holiday. Um, so that's one we're going to look at today. Now when I looked on Friday, the exchange rate was one pound could buy you one euro and eleven cents. The exchange rate can vary from day to day based on lots of complicated things, but um, I thought we'll just go with that one, but it can change day to day, even hour to hour. So we'll stick with that one for the whole lesson. So if one pound can buy you one euro and eleven cents, that means that ten pounds can buy you 11 euros and 10 cents because we just multiply 10 by 1.11. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be multiplying pounds by the exchange rate of 1.11. We will be able to use our calculators today. Let's have a look at the first example. So imagine we had five pounds and we wanted to buy some euros. What we would do is do five multiplied by 1.11. You might be able to even do that one mentally. If not, put it into your calculator. Make sure you're putting in the decimal point where it's meant to be. So hopefully you get five euros and 55 cents as your answer. Okay, that is basically as straightforward as it is. Okay, so if you had five pounds, you'd be able to buy five euros and 55 cents. So I have some examples for you to try here. Um, it starts sort of easy and gets harder as the columns go on. Um, so you can use your calculator. Remember when we're putting things in the calculator and using decimals, there can be lots of numbers after the decimal point. If there are more than two numbers, you need to just have two numbers because when we use money, we only have ever have two numbers after the decimal point. Okay. So for example, if you get an answer that says 11.993, okay, you can't put the 3 in because we don't have three numbers after the decimal point in our money. So you just ignore the last number. The other thing you can do is round up. So if you had an example which was 13.117, the 7 is quite a high number at the end, we could round that up to instead of being 11 we could round it up to 12. That's a bit complicated and it's not the main um, aim of the lesson today so don't worry about that one too much today but please just make sure you've got two numbers after the decimal point. So you can pause the video here, try those examples, remember we're multiplying each one by 1.11 as that is the exchange rate. Hopefully you have had a wee chance to work those out. Here are the answers. Remember, we only need two numbers after the decimal point. I have maybe rounded up, so if you have got slightly different answers, it might just be because you didn't round up. 
Um, so if it's one number off, that's okay. And um, we'll look at that another day, that's not an issue. So have a look, see if you've got the right answers um, that we've got there. If you did, well done. If you've maybe got one or two wee things to check, maybe you didn't type in the, the correct numbers into the calculator, for example. Um, so maybe that's just something to bear in mind. I also do apologise that my decimal points are really hard to see um, on the board there, so please just make sure that you are doing them more obviously than me. You can do your work a lot neater than I can, probably. Awesome, guys. Let's move on. Let's this time imagine we've got euros, we've been our holiday, and we want to come back, and we've got leftover euros, and we need to get pounds again. So we can use euros to buy pounds. The exchange rate um, works a little bit differently. So again, when I checked on Friday, the euro, one euro, got you 90 pence. So if you had one euro, you could buy 90 pence, okay? So this time, instead of multiplying by 1.11, we're going to multiply by 0 0.9 because that is the exchange rate. So if I had 10 euros coming back my holiday, I would multiply 10 by 0 0.9 on my calculator and that gives me nine pounds. So having a look at this first example here, if I had five euros, how many pounds could I buy? I do five multiplied by 0 0.9 or 0 0.90, it's the same thing. And hopefully, you would get £4.50, okay? Let's have a look at some examples here. So again, I've got three different um, ability levels there for you to try. You can do them all, you can just pick one, it's up to you. This time you're multiplying each number by 0 0.9, okay? So pause the video, see how you get on. Okay, fab guys, here are the answers for those questions. Again, it might be slightly different depending on whether you've rounded or not, so I've put in the answers that might be slightly different depending on your rounding. Other mistakes could just be because you've put the wrong thing in the calculator, so it's always good just to double check that you've typed in the right, um, the right sum. So hopefully you were able to get those answers correct. You can pause the video and have a double check if you want. Okay, time for a challenge. So this time we're not going to do euros, we're going to work with American dollars. Probably when you did your um, research on Monday you came across American dollars. Um, again, some people might have been on holiday to America and used dollars before. When I checked on Friday the exchange rate was one pound could buy you one dollar and thirty six cents. So the exchange rate, we're going to be times in things, multiplying things by 1.36. So, I ah, forgot about this extra challenge. Um, I've also put in the money that is used in Brazil. And the exchange rate for that is one pound could buy you seven, I think it's pronounced reals, seven reals and 35 cents. Okay, so what we would need to do is multiply by 7.35. So this is an added challenge. So on the board here I have got 10 questions and I would like you to find how much we could get in America in US dollars and how much we could get in Brazil um, using those exchange rates. So for each one, for question one for example, you're going to do £7.40 multiplied by 1.36 first of all and that will give you the answer for the American dollars. And then, completely separate sum, you're going to do £7.40 multiplied by 7.35 and that will give you the answer for how much that would be in the Brazilian currency. Okay, so a, a few questions for you to work through there. Pause the video here, do that activity on your jotter or on paper, wherever you like. Um, you can upload a picture of your completed work, but I will go over the answers um, just in a wee second. So if you want to, to mark as you go, you absolutely can, and I will give you feedback on that later on. So pause the video here, and we'll get the answers afterwards. Okay, guys, here are the answers for the first section. So that was the American dollars. Again, 
you might not have rounded up or uh, I've maybe rounded in my answer so if it's slightly different don't worry about it too much and um, but you can have a look at the answers there and then the last one that's the answers for the Brazilian currency so you can have a wee look at that well done for your hard work today hopefully that makes sense hopefully that was um, a good introduction to how we use exchange rates again like I said earlier post your work into teams and I will have a wee look at it later um, if you want an added challenge if you quite enjoy doing that if you go into Google or any other search engine and you could type in any of the currencies that you found out about on Monday you could look up the exchange rates for those currencies and maybe you could do some of the exchange rates yourself usually when you do type it into Google it comes up with a sort of um, calculator for you to use anyway so it could be quite fun playing around with different currencies and um, seeing all the different calculations so that could just be an extra wee task that you do well done everybody today I will speak to you later bye